Welcome to the Perspectives with Catherine Toon podcast. Well, hello, everybody. This is Catherine Toon, and I'm excited to share uh, for me this is morning. I don't know when it will be for you. Uh, I'm excited uh, to be on all the podcast channels and then also on the global awakening network how exciting so we're just expanding isn't that just like god god is so fruitful and i have a really uh beautiful but simple message for you today and you know simplicity is powerful sometimes we can get um so complex and theological that we kind of lose our way and sort of disconnect from what God is wanting to really minister in our hearts. And so the basics are really eternal. Uh, And there's a special mandate on my life uh, to share God as the person of love, not just in a theological sense, but in an encounter-based sense. We need to know the simplicity of being loved. Everything flows out of that. That's that is actually why you were created. Uh, God is love. That's first John 4, 8 and 16. And as the essence of who he is, you know, God is love, is his primal nature. He starts from there, he ends from there, everything in between, and then it goes in a circle because God is endless and fathomless. And we tend to be very linear in our thinking, uh, which is why sometimes we have such a hard time really grappling, really getting uh, being loved, the simplicity of being loved. You know, if you're loved by someone who adores you, um, you are thoroughly loved. There's no part of you that's you, that's not love. And even the broken places, the sinful places, those places are love because if love is unconditional, that means there's no conditions on love. There's no conditions. You know, sometimes we think it's unconditional love, but well, you just put a condition on love right? And the first two attributes of love are patience and kindness. And you know, in the places where we're not looking lovely, where we're looking ugly, maybe we're looking depraved, you know, humanity is jacked up. And you and you and I both know, if we're honest, that we're jacked up too. But we are also adored right where we're at and walking out who we are. Now, I want to create a caveat with that because who you truly are is not jacked up. It's actually perfect. Yeah, you heard me. (laughs) Who you truly are is perfect. Well, let, let, let me tell you why that's actually scriptural. And I know you've got a lot of, you probably have a lot of scriptures coming up. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, just, 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 settle down. It's going to be okay. I know there's things that are jacked up. We just said, we're starting for the premise that there's things that are jacked up. But who you are and who you truly are is perfect. You want to know why I can say that? It's because you were created in the image and likeness of God. You were created in the heart of love himself. I'm going to be referring to God as love because this is about you and the simplicity of being loved. And I want to get a, maybe, maybe the G word is triggering for you. If you've been brought up with religion of any flavor, you know, we've got Christian evangelical flavor, uh, religiosity, but 
there's all sorts of religiosity. I was actually born uh, in a family, my natural family, uh, that was secular humanist, and God was also very religious. It just looked differently. So I'm, I'm going to be referring to God as love because that's who he is in his primal nature. You know, it's it's cute because my sister and I kind of have this ongoing debate. It's a fun debate because everybody wins. Um, and that her thing is like, well, God's essence is truth. Yeah. And I will say the truth of who God is, is love. Everything comes out of love. And so God is Father, Son, and Spirit who are eternal, who are equal, who look like one another, <clears throat> but are also distinct. Okay, they're not they're not a homogeneous blob. Okay. Uh, they're they're persons, three and one, as one God, three persons. And when I get it, I'll come find you. And when you get it, you come find me, because I know you won't get it either. So let's just be, it's okay. Let's just relax. Because God is so masterful. He's like, you're doing good. Keep going. So let, let's do that. So God is as, as the person of love, Father, Son, and Spirit were eternal and are eternal. And, and so much love that they exploded in a race of children that look just like him in your favor. That's the essence of who you are. You're in the image and likeness of love himself. You are made by love for the purpose of being loved, for the purpose of love. And that extends in doing something and doing lots of things out of love. And it's really simple. But let's not be uh, prideful and somehow think that simple is not profound. You know, I, I kind of get flack for preaching on love all the time because I don't, I don't know why I'm getting flack. For, well, because people have a problem with it. It's somehow too good or too simplistic. No, when we get it, I will stop preaching on it. But, you know, I need to preach to myself first and then you get it too. So we're, gonna, we're in this together and that's the joy. That's the beauty. We're on a journey of growing in the knowledge of who God is. Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as he's given us all things for life and godliness and has invited us to be partakers of his divine nature. Okay, so we can be partakers of his divine nature because we're made out of him. You look just like God in your flavor and who you really are. And I know there's a lot of you and me uh, that doesn't look like that. But that's not who we truly are. These are fallen ways of being. See, the only way you're going to get to know you is by really getting to know intimately, not just in your head. But yeah, my head's good. Yeah, that is important. God gave you a brilliant brain. He, but knowing him in a guttural, encounter-based sense, as well as with our minds, we are God's kids. So as beloved God's kids, we get everything. You get everything. You know, and we start from where we're at. And keep on going. You know, I I used to be, I used to constantly feel I was so behind. It was so behind. It was so behind. It was so behind. It was just this fear-based driver. And, and I finally learned that if God is directing the show, and I, I'm doing my best to follow him. I'm going to say slash her because God is both male and female. That's a book that I wrote, but we'll, we can discuss that later. Nobody freaked out. Um, God is love. And love looks lovely. And you're created in the image and likeness of love, whether you're masculine or feminine, you know, as, as, as when you're, whether you're a man or woman, boy, girl, whatever, uh, whether you're not sure, you're still love. Okay. All right. You're still, because you didn't create yourself, God created you. And when he created you as love, he created you and adores you. Every bit of you, 
it's like the baby that we that, that when you have that newborn if you're a healthy mom and dad there's something that most often doesn't always happen that we're broken okay i get it um floods you and every bit of this little being is perfect every bit is perfect even the little stinky parts <laughs> the parts that pee and poop Okay, <laughs> the parts, parts that spit up on you, the parts that are loud and wake you up in the middle of the night. Oh, these parts are precious. Why? Because they're all of you. And you were created as a spirit and as spirit, you were perfect. What? How, okay, so let me just ask you, how masterful is God? Is God this co cosmic jerk that he creates you and then goes, oh, oops, right? Or that he kind of created you, but forgot about you and you cooked too long or something. Okay. Or that he's kind of this cosmic jokester that he gave you some ugly thing. All right. And there's lots of things in religion that can point to that. Okay. But God is not about religion. God is about freedom. God is about love. And as the person of love, he wants his kids free. And one of the things that he wants us free from is religiosity that says you have to do to be. And I, I just hear God being really kind of ticked off about that in, 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 in a good way, in a way that's for you. Every time that God's ticked off, do you know he's ticked off for you? His wrath, different topic, is for you is against everything that harms you. Listen, if you want to see me, see me moved. Oh, goodness. It's all going down. You mess with my kids. Well, I'm not better than the father who created me and who created you. And so he's so for you. The word of God says that God is for you. Who can be against you? Okay, I want you to think about the who's that feel against you right now. Who feels against you if God is for you? Okay. Who's against you? I mean, there's a bunch of people that may not like you. Maybe there's some people that are, quote unquote, enemies that are trying to destroy you. But with God's forness, I can't hear you. Okay. You think the devil or whatever we are defining as the devil, because sometimes we think we know what that is. And oh, ooh, there's lots of debate. It's anyway, whatever feels of a spiritual dimension that is against you and is plaguing you with torment and all that. Okay. Um, but if God is for you, if he's defeated death, hell, and the grave, um, if he's defeated the entity of sin and is working that out in you as you work things out, as you work out your salvation with fear and trembling, not because you need to be afraid, because it's a rebel. It's like, oh, you are so holy, just like your daddy, just like your father. And I'm going to go on a limb here, Mother God. Okay. I understand we don't have, we're not into goddess worship, but we do realize that God is both masculine and feminine in expression and, and if you need help with that um i have a book on that and and just don't let that trip you up but i'm saying it because i want to lay a foundation because there's no one gender that's less than and we have a lot of problems with that but that's all i'm going to say because i'll go off on a tangent but if you have a father if you have a parent that is perfect and loves you perfectly and is able to save you. We need saving. So we, because we're created in the image and likeness of God, are marked by love. That's the essence of our true nature. We are marked by love. There's every bit of us that, there's nothing that's not created apart from God. So there's nothing in us that's not marked by love, except for the things that we are operating in that don't know that, that are blind to the light of who God is as the person of love, as the person who is truth, right? God has a lot to say about himself, okay? 
So if you are created in the image and likeness of God, God is love. You are marked by love. Every bit of who you truly are is of the essence of love. And so the stuff that doesn't look like, well, that's subject to change. I think it's called, let me think, 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 think. Oh, it's salvation. <laughs> he loves you so much. He is relentless in saving you. Now, let me just help you with that for a second, because a lot of religious stuff comes up with that. Um, let me tell you what he's not saving him, saving you from. Okay. He's not saving you from himself. Because the Godhead doesn't separate itself into something that doesn't look like God. There's not an angry God and a nice God. We have no good cop, bad cop. They all look like one another. They all look like love. This is why actually Christ came to reveal his father. That's one of the reasons he came in the flesh. Okay. Oh, you've seen me. You've seen the father. Well, if did Jesus, did you need saving from Jesus? No. Well, you don't need saving from Father God. And you might need some healing there. You may need some, some um, uh, discipleship. And, you know, one of the reasons why there's so much, uh, many amazing uh, ministries that are preaching grace and truth and love and freedom that is inclusive for the entire world. Okay. Nobody got created apart from God. You didn't slip in the back door. Okay. You didn't climb over the fence. We're all his sheep. And we have varying degrees of how good we are tracking with his voice. And that's one of the reasons why my ministry exists, but many ministries exist, right? I'm not the only thing out there, but I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I'm happy. I'm, I have life to give. And so stay tuned because we got so much to share and we're just on this journey together. Isn't that fun? And we can relax. Thank you, Jesus, in the journey because God is so masterful at his job. And so one of the things that he is doing is revealing himself to us. Hi, honey, this is who I really am. Yeah, I know, but this is who I really am. Yes, I know about that too, but this is who I, yes, I know about that. And I know that you did that detestable thing. And I know that, but you, oh, you can suck the bottle in whom I'm well pleased. Why? Because I know who you truly are. So everything that doesn't look like who you truly are, uh, love, is being saved, is being um, uh, uh, done away with, because that's not who you really are. It's like you're shedding off all these false identities to be the glorious truth of who you are created in the image of love, marked by love. You know, I say in my book, Marked by Love, and if you haven't gotten it, oh my goodness, you're going to want to get a copy. It's on Amazon. I'll, I'll uh, flip a copy here. Unfortunately, I think this is going to be backwards. I meant to do this the right way. But anyway, this says marked by love. I'm sorry. Uh, unveiling. What is it? Unveiling the substance of your true identity. <laughs> I had to remind my soul. Oh, I've got it so together. Um, and then I also have a workbook. So anyway, um, think about getting that. You're, you're going to, I don't want to. Um, it's on Amazon. Uh, so, and it's got the big fingerprint on it. That's the right one. So anyway are obviously from this unabashed promotion of my materials. Listen, you know, I do this because you need to get this. Oh my goodness. It is life from the dead. It is healing what torments you. The Bible says that perfect love is a person. Okay. Perfect love casts out fear. That means he eradicates fear. Why does he do that? Because fear says I'm less than, I'm not good enough, I'm evil, I'm fallen, I'm powerless, I'm helpless, I'm dirty. I'm, we got all these lies about who we are. And God's response to that is like, who told you that? Because that's not who you truly are. Now, it may be how you're acting. Like we are jacked up. We are act, not act, but that's your, your, your do is not your who. 
so that maybe the really fallen, depraved ways that maybe you're not even acting out of, but maybe in your mind or maybe a desire or something, and you know it's evil. Okay, those things. Well, this is already who you are. But in our brokenness, we can manifest those things. And we can manifest, dang it, in abundance. We can manifest in abundance. And that is pain, a painful truth. But that's why you need saving. And that's why God is relentless in saving you or working. The salvation's complete. We have a finished worker. Let's let's not be confused. God really did something on that cross. He's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So this happened before he even sent you. Okay. And he walked it out as a human being on, uh, in, in, in the flesh because he was unwilling to do with any part of you. And he's pointing to his dad and he's saying, oh my goodness, I'm not willing to let anything have you. That's bad for you. You were already mine. I chose you. I joined you to myself. You get to choose me back. And I'm choosing you because you look just like me. You're my child in your flavor. And that expression of you being marked by love is your place of greatest contribution on the planet. As we manifest the sons and daughters of God of love, creation is released from its bondage. Well, guess what? You're part of creation. So you get to be released from its bondage and then you get to be a party to releasing other people from bondage, which is the whole point of any ministry. Any, any 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 ministry, whether it looks like a like a, a channel that talks about God, or it looks about making dinner, or changing diapers, or being an accountant, and you know any area of service, we're here to serve one another. We're here to love one another. We're here to do the one thing that God said fulfills everything. A new commandment I give to you. That you love one another as I have loved you. By this, all people, the world, the ones that know God, the ones that know God as Jesus, <laughs> or you don't. You know, your, your sonship, your daughtership is not based on what you know and a prayer you prayed. It's based on the parents. Well, your, your parentage is God. Father, Son, and Spirit, that's your parent. You didn't choose them. He chose you, and you get to choose them back. And your experience of that reality is you choosing him back. And in choosing God back, I choose love because I've been marked by love. I'm in the image and likeness of love, and I'm starting to track, oh, my goodness, love, I'm so loved. I am so adored by this person who pursues me relentlessly i have a chapter it's actually one of my favorite chapters because it makes me laugh <laughs> if you're not having fun you're doing it wrong and no no condemnation but god actually is a very relaxed person and he wants you to have fun right as a good parent don't you love it when your kids are just having fun right he wants us okay let me give religious terms I have come that you might have life more abundantly till the full till it overflows. Okay, if you need a scripture for that. It's a good scripture. Yay, I vote for that scripture. I vote for that life more. So life more, but have a good time, right? Have a good time. I just got a lower hand on my screen. I have no idea if that did. Okay, I'm getting rid of that. <laughs> I didn't know it did that. All right, aren't you glad to know? You don't have to have your stuff all together. I so don't, but I so do. I do and don't. Just like you, you do and don't. But God wants you to know that you were marked by love before you were marred by anything else. You know, we come into this world and our spirits are fully one with God. We fully look like him in our flavor. You know, we're not this amorphous love blob. No, you look like you in the flavor of love and love looks like the flavor of you in your flavor. 
right? And so it's this beautiful thing. You know, the we're 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 um we're one, but we're separate and distinct. God is one, but separate and distinct. Father, Son, and Spirit, all looking like love. And He marked you as Himself. And so we come into this world marked by love, and knowing until we forget. And then as we are born, and we are forgetful. And I remember as a little kid, I remember. Knowing in my spirit, like, I know God and I know the way to heaven, but I was kind of panicking because I, I was forgetting the way to heaven. And this was like a thing, but God, I would have God encounters. I needed God encounters because there's a lot of abuse in my family and that'll be, maybe be something we get in. We get into that whenever we're supposed to, but God marked you. And then <clears throat> with love in every bit of you. And then we grew up, we, we were born in a fallen world. Did you vote for the fallen world? No. So if there's I, that hand thing's happening again, <laughs> sorry. I don't even know if it's coming on the screen, but if it is, we can both laugh together. It'll be good. Um, <laughs> I can't praise God because it raises the hand. Anyway, oh my gosh, you got to love AI. It's great and it's not. Anyway, whatever that is. So we were born perfect in the image and likeness of God and the image and likeness of love. And then we get marred by life. We were born in a fallen world that we didn't vote for. And since you didn't vote for the fallenness of the world, you get this grace, grace. Oh my goodness. Stuff at God's expense, every good thing at his expense and empowerment to, to know him and to be who you truly are. Now, you know, um, uh, I have to make sure that this program is in the time frame. And so we're really coming up fast and furious at the time limit here. But I want you to stay tuned. I want you to make a commitment to come back um, to the next broadcast, whether this is on the Global Awakening Network or whether this is on your favorite podcast platform or whether this is on YouTube or wherever you're finding me. Oh, my goodness. We're going to do this thing together we're going to grow in the knowledge of god who is love and be able to be unveiled in the fullness of who we are as marked by love in our flavor and then operate from the identity of being that son and daughter in the image and likeness of love and fulfill the purposes that he prearranged before the foundation of the world this is what God is doing these kids. And you are along for the ride. You get to enjoy it. You get to have life more abundant to the full and know the simplicity of being loved. I hope this has been a blessing. Love you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Perspectives with Catherine Toon. For additional information and resources, please visit CatherineToon.com.